What is interesting that you know we, we studied pretty pretty careful these 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 people that were doing that are doing calorie restriction and we found that many of the metabolic and hormonal adaptations that are occurring in long-lived CR animals are also occurring in humans on CR. However, there was an exception, a major exception, that is in CR animals uh, there is a 30-40% a reduction in IGF-1. IGF-1 stands for insulin-like growth factor 1 that is an important growth factor. So basically it's pushing cell proliferation Anytime you know you you have high IGF-1, basically you are growing. Think about people you know with acromegaly. You know they have high growth hormone, high IGF-1. They are giants. Sort of people who have low IGF-1, they are dwarfs. What we found in, in 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 basically is that not only with the CR animal studies, but also with other genetic animal studies, that low IGF-1 is associated with longevity. So animals that have a low IGF-1, they live longer, and they're much healthier, they have much less cancer. And now there are also data of these dwarfs that are living in, in Ecuador that genetically they are dwarfs because they have extremely low IGF-1. That is, that is different from color restriction where you have lower IGF-1, it's not close to zero IGF-1. But anyway, these people in Ecuador, in Ecuador have very low, extremely low IGF-1, they, they do not have cancer, they don't develop cancer. There is no cancer in these people. Suggesting that, you know, IGF-1 in humans is really important in regulating uh, cancer. So, in these people who are doing CR, because they were eating a very high protein diet by design, we didn't see the reduction in IGF-1 that, you know, we know it's happening in animals on color restriction. And so when we ask these people to lower their protein intake for three weeks, their IGF-1 dropped by 25%. Suggested in humans, unlike in rodents, protein intake is a very important regulator of IGF-1 that is a risk factor for prostate cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, and, 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 and many other cancers. So, Based on this data, we decided to do a study to see how reducing protein intake from what we consider to be a very high, a high level in protein intake that, that is normal for many uh, people eating a typical American diet. So if we lower this protein intake to a normal protein intake, that is normal based on what is recommended by the, by the, the USDA. So the, the recommended USDA protein intake is 0.8 grams, 0 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram body weight per day. In US, in US people are eating on average 1.2, 1.3 grams of protein per kilogram body weight. Now with the Atkin, South Beach diet, people are, even, are eating even more proteins than than before, and and uh, and so our idea is to see if we lower this protein intake from 1.3, 1.4 to 0.8. That is what is recommended. If this is gonna reduce block prostate cancer. Now we started with prostate cancer, but eventually, you know, we, we can do studies on breast cancer. So other 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 cancer we, that we know are IGF-1 related, meaning that, you know, women and men with higher IGF-1 in their blood, they have a higher risk of developing breast cancer and prostate cancer. And so the question is, if we lower protein intake, can we lower IGF-1 and all the other factors that are regulated by protein intake, and can we reduce the risk of developing prostate no well it's not the risk here can we block the growth of prostate cancer and this is a very important question because i think you know that in humans is not only calorie calories are, are important but it's possible you know other macronutrients are important for regulating specific diseases in this case cancer possibly longevity